nobody's after a 5% ROI increase. We want a big change. It's like, test the whole angle, test the whole image, like two things completely differently each time you test something. That's how you're gonna discover completely new things that you would never even think about, and that's what changes the ROI. We have three of the biggest spenders on Native. They know their shit. Guys, please introduce yourself. I'm Michael Seal, and I run a media buying company, and I do Native ads full time. Uh, my name is James Van Elswick, and I'm pretty much all around marketer. All the different traffic sources, things with creatives, things that are based on data. I have a media buying agency and a creative agency, and uh, I run a lot of ads. Hey, I'm Ralphs. I I've been running on native ads since 2015. I've scaled multiple campaigns to seven figures. Uh, my record is $89,000 in one day. And what's interesting about me, I guess, is that I do it all alone. I'm a one-man army. And up to today, I'm still actively running on native ads, obviously. Starting on native is not that hard, is it? Right? So, I mean, almost everybody can manage to do that. But then, of course, becoming profitable is a different game, and scaling is even more different. So, I guess the way that you work sets you really apart from a beginner, the way your process is uh, in place. And then I think there's a couple of aspects that people should really, really look more into. What are those? Um, one of the reasons why people fail is because they let the emotions take over. Uh, for example, when I set up a campaign, I set it up with a low daily budget and I have certain optimization rules in place and I know how much money I'm willing to lose and I let the campaign optimize itself and I don't I try not to quit too early yeah it, it's not as much of a black box as Facebook for example it's a lot more manual so the ability to measure decisions is there and I think the emotion thing like he says if you start spending on things that you feel are going to go well you're just gonna blaze through all of uh, all of your budget so I think being that it's it's more manual, I think that's really the key so people don't lose too much. I think part of natives isn't so much what you're making as much as it is trying to lose as little as possible. Right. I think in, in order to be successful in native, you just have to focus on your stuff and not copy others because there's always a lot of affiliates running the same stuff. And so if you get like stuck to this spying mentality, then you will be always behind. Let's stick with that. Your shirt says, keep it simple. I'm not sure if you can read that. Correct. Uh, just keep it simple. So if we keep, keep it simple, what's like the one main thing that people should look at? The most important thing is the angle. As you said, content is king, and the angle is what will either make you money or lose you money. Uh, you have to test different angles, different headlines, different images. Uh, that's the only way forward. Yeah, I think angle, creative strategy. I mean, like, we're really all going to be replaced on the digital side by machines soon. Like, everything will be automated, but you can't automate, like, creating an angle, this emotion, this use, or, or what it is that makes someone actually want to buy. You can replace playing with the bids and things of this nature. So I think creative. Yeah, I agree. Creative angle is most important. But to get more specific, if you're looking at the ad title itself, and then from there, you're creating the advertorial. From there, you're creating the images. That's a good starting point. So you, you start with the headline? Yeah, that's the most important part. OK. Because fantastic. that dictates everything else. OK, that's very interesting. All right. The, the way that I tend to test is I have a limited number of landing pages but a shitload of different ads that feed into those landing pages. You do go the other way around. You first get the headline right and everything comes from there. Right, yeah, so you have the ad title, but you will, to save time and be more efficient, you'll create multiple of those that can fit a category. Like, um, there's kind of like a range of creatives that can work on an advertorial. Right. So you're testing those, and if you do find a new creative to be successful, like it has a high CTR, but it's not quite converting as well, then you'll go back, you'll create a new advertorial that is more relevant to that creative. 
Okay, that's interesting. Well, let's go more into the concrete steps that you're taking for finding or developing great uh, creative stuff, right? So uh, let's start with the headline, but maybe each of you can quickly go through uh, the biggest steps in your process from having an idea to having a successful campaign. Um, one of the strategies is look at a spy tool, but don't dwell on it too long. Um, it's good to see what's already working, but you know, you really want to eventually out-innovate them because they already have more data than you, so they are the bigger fish, so they should beat you unless you come up with a slight twist or a major twist that really takes it from them. Okay. Yeah, I think it's like more beneficial as far as the chance of making a large ROI, large profit, to do as he's saying, which is to spend the time testing to innovate as a like really go outside the comfort zone and find completely new uh, images or angles as opposed to just trying little variations of someone else's or the same shit that you always run. It, it's a little bit more expensive, but once you hit, you're gonna have a much better response if you have something that's a lot fresher and newer. Yeah, exactly as James said, it's all about testing the big things. Uh, nobody's after a 5% ROI increase. We want the big changes, like test the whole angle, test the whole image that like, two things completely differently each time you test something that's how you're gonna discover completely new things that you would never even think about and that's what changes the ROI. Cool so if you have an idea like how many different headlines um, or creatives uh, do you then come up with to split test? As many as you can. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that, just really, sit I re, down. I, I, remember, I remember a screenshot uh, from one of your presentations. And it was, I don't know, high five figures just testing budget per day, but that was Facebook, I think. Um, is, is that what you guys are speaking about? Just to put that in, in, in reference? It depends, like, it, it depends on how fast and aggressive you like to spend money. So it's like, uh, again, I, I take all the different variables, whether it's image, headline, landing page, and decide how much I want to spend per each to make a proof. And I put an Excel spreadsheet, and then I see what I'm going to spend. If I need to make 30 decisions, at, you know, $100 a decision, then I know the amount that I'm going to have to go for. And you can either do a little bit at a time, or you can like just rip the Band-Aid off all at one shot, lose a bunch early, and then kind of build out. But yeah, it's as many variations as, as you can think of. You know, the, the more, the better. Yeah, I think that's a, the scary part for a lot of people uh, who, who are just starting out, right? Uh, so we, when we run like a bigger scale test on Facebook, um, it easily reaches at least high four digits, five digits sometimes, right, per day. And that can be scary, right? Because you have no idea if it's gonna work out or not, okay. Uh, what's a more lean strategy here? So if you don't really know yet if things are starting out, uh, you're just testing less? Or how do you go for that? Yeah, I start off with a lower budget. Um, in the United States, I usually start off with a $200 a day budget. Okay. Um, in other countries where the CPCs are cheaper, you could start off with as little as a $50 a day budget. And that's going to start showing you, it should show you enough placements early on uh, so you can start looking at your LPCTR, like the click through rate for, through the advertorial. Right. And if you notice some placements that are very weak, you bid those down or you block those. And then also if you have one placement that's hogging up uh, a majority of the traffic, you can bid that one down so you can get a spread of data. So I would recommend for limited budgets, uh, like about 200 a day in the US, keep an eye on the placements and make sure they don't get out of hand. All right, well, that's fantastic. I think we can do one more round for this interview. Uh, if you want to share one more thing with our audience, what would that be? Your number one tip. Be innovative. Try things that other people don't do. Yeah, to follow up to him, like take risks because you can test them. Like you can think something up and you'll find out if it's good or bad pretty quick, so you might as well try a lot of things because you can actually see if it works or not figure out why you're in this business other than just for money. And if it is for the advertising side, get passionate about that. Read old direct response copywriting books and uh, really let, if you, isolate that passion so it can help you get
get better in this industry. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. I obviously agree. That was a good one. Thanks, guys. Thank